Welcome to a brand new coaster review. This is of Six Flags Discovery Kingdom in Vallejo, California near San Francisco. I got to visit the park for the first time in July of 2016 and to this day I've only been to the park once. All of the attractions were running except for V2 so I was not able to get on that. But I rode everything else and I like to think that I really got a good feel for the park. So in this review you're going to be hearing a lot of my thoughts on the place, what I think they do well, what needs improvement and so on and so forth. So let's get to this. First impressions. I gotta say, when you first go up to the parking lot and you get out of your car, you see the park placed before you right behind this lake and it looks fantastic. I love the skyline for this. It was so cool just being able to see the park from a distance, but I mean on the downside you then have to walk all the way there. I think they do have some trams going, but I believe it was just a lot faster just to walk there. And I gotta say, I'm surprised at how many of these coasters are right next to each other. Maybe that's kind of why the Skyline works so well. They're all real close together. Because you have the front of the park, which is all like roller coasters and thrill rides. Then the back of the park is all animals. So that's kind of an interesting layout. But also makes for kind of a cool dynamic where if you want to get footage or photos of these attractions, a lot of the times the best view that you're going to be able to get is from outside the entrance. Before you even enter the park, you get a great view of Joker, Superman, Medusa especially. A lot of the footage that you're seeing in this video was taken from outside the park without even going in the entrance. So you've parked, you've walked up to the entrance, and now you're going inside. First impressions from inside there, I like how you can either go left or right to ride these major attractions. You go to the right, you're getting the Super Loop, Cobra, Medusa, Kong, and then that can also lead towards the back of the park, but if you were to go left, you're going to get Superman, Joker, I believe that's the entrance where V2 was. So it is kind of nice how they've split it off, but kind of on a downside, that does mean that a lot of the GP are going to go straight for a lot of these huge attractions. So like take Joker, for example, that by far had the longest line all day. It rarely got shorter. You're looking at least 45 minutes to an hour wait. And I think that was just a combination of running one train and maybe slower operations. So I wasn't a fan of that, but I mean for convenience sake it is nice that you can get out of line for Joker and then just immediately go over to Superman. I mean they really are just like right next to each other and you have Wonder Woman Last of Truth that's going right next to him also. So again another major attraction going right up front. Now let's talk about the rest of the park. So then you have the back where you do have some rides here and there. You have their boomerang. There's a ride I believe called Tomahawk that's back there. And of course you have all the animals. So you got lots of sea creatures, I love how they have sea lions, and you do have some exotic ones, like they have elephants there. And I believe if you pay extra, you can ride an elephant. Where else can you do that? That's crazy. You can also feed giraffes, they have a butterfly house, I thought that that was a nice touch, that was something that I didn't know that they had going in. You can also check out some big cats, such as lions, so those are always cool, and you also have some wolves, reptiles. So it really was almost like half zoo, which was neat. So if you're not into the coasters, there's still plenty for you to do. You can ride coasters, then go into an aquarium and check out sharks. So I loved that aspect about it. Now, one thing I gotta say, despite all this, I walked away from Six Flags Discovery Kingdom kind of disappointed. I don't know, I just think that it looks a lot better on paper than it actually was. There's certainly lots of cool aspects about it, but it seems like a lot of this park was just kind of okay, like it was meh. I'd probably put it up there with like Six Flags St. Louis. So why did I feel that way? Why did I walk away a little disappointed? I think one thing is that they don't have that huge standout-ish roller coaster. Like they have Joker, which is an RMC, but that was like okay. Medusa's their other largest one, and that was like a good floorless and stuff. But I mean, I guess the other problem with that is that they do have that 150 foot height limit. So there's only so much that they can do, but in the end, I really just felt that their coaster collection was like okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, I certainly like had a good time at the park. I enjoyed being able to ride the attractions, see the animals. But I think I had this idea built up in my mind that this was like one of the top six flags parks. And so when I walked away, I was like, oh, I mean, that's kind of one of the weaker Six Flags parks, actually. I mean, the animals and stuff are nice and all, but it certainly does still feel like a Six Flags park. Like, I mean, take, for example, the food. Six Flags always has their pros and cons with food. One of the pros that I like is that you have a snack in between meals. So, like, let's say that you want to go to Johnny Rockets to get a milkshake. They are slow as heck. It seemed like the food service was always really super slow. Some of their food options were better than others. I remember for dinner, I got something towards the back of the park and you couldn't really find it at too many other Six Flags parks. It felt kind of more natural 
It wasn't like your burger or pizza or anything. It was like a sandwich. So I like that they have options, but sometimes food at Six Flags Parks is just kind of like mediocre at best. So just kind of to wrap things up, would I recommend this park? Yeah, I, I think that you should visit it, but this isn't one of those places that I think you necessarily have to visit year after year unless it's your home park. I mean, if you're traveling and you can't make it out to California every single year, and it comes down to where you're on a time schedule and you have to pick which parks to visit, at the end of the day, I would probably say skip Six Flags Discovery Kingdom and choose another one, especially one of those parks down south. And the way California's Great America is shaping up to look, that park is going to be awesome within the next couple of years, and that park will really then pass up Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Right now, I think they're about equal with each other, but I mean, once Cedar Fair starts pouring money into them, then Six Flags is going to have to step up their game. And when I say step up their game, I'm not talking about adding an SNS 4D free spin here, which they probably will end up doing at one point. So again, I mean, it's a fine park. You can certainly come here to have a good time, but is it anything really super memorable? I don't know if it is. SeaWorld does the animal parts better. Other Six Flags parks do the coasters better. So if I had to sum up Six Flags Discovery Kingdom with one word, I'd probably say fine. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's just, it's all right. In my opinion, the only thing that could really get me out there to really want to visit that park again would be if they got this big, awesome new roller coaster that really changed how that park is. They have some good things going for them, but I mean, at the end of the day, there's better parks out there. So let me know about what you think of Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Do you agree with my point of view? Do you think that the park is better than what I've said? You can post all those thoughts in the comment section below, and of course, you can stay tuned for more park reviews. I have plenty more coming here at Coaster Studios. Thank <laughs> you.